Welcome to Let's Talk Money with Natasha, your host. Welcome, and today we would like to thank and greet Mr. Shiv Mazir, our local GTA real estate broker expert with uh, Remax All Stars. Welcome, Mr. Mazir. Thank you, Natasha. Nice to have you here. So today we're going to have a, a really great uh, topic to discuss. We're going to talk about real estate um, in the GTA and what is happening in this hot market right now that we are seeing that's uh, that's growing tremendously. So, Mr. Mazir, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about your background in terms of uh, real estate and how long you've been doing it and why you love doing it, etc. Sure, Natasha. Um, well, I've been in the business uh, since 1988. So, take the numbers there, it'll be about 27 years. Wow. So, I got into it and, uh, in 1988 and never came out of it. <laughs> well, good for you. Wow, 20 plus years. Yeah. Awesome. What, what, so, you, you got into real estate because of your father. And you're a broker, right? I'm a broker. So, yes. why don't you explain to, to our audience again the difference between a broker and a real estate agent? Well, a broker is a designation that uh, you become a broker after having practiced as a sales representative uh, for three to five years. And uh, basically, getting to uh, become a broker, the advantage, one of the main advantages is that you can open your own brokerage. I mean, if you're an agent uh, sales representative, you can't do that. But um, it's, it's a designation that is uh, worthy to have if you're in the business a long time because people tend to recognize you a bit more and they kind of uh, place a lot of trust in you because they think as a broker you, you have the experience and knowledge. Awesome. And is there any um, more additional due diligence in terms of articling for education to maintain your license for a broker versus a, let's say, a real estate agent? Not anymore. It used to be, but um, once you become a broker, um, the uh, pre-requirements to renew your license, uh, you know, it's uh, basically the same as an agent. Okay, good to know. Well, let's talk about about this hot GTA market right now. And I know you're one of, uh, you know, Toronto's top agent um, or broker. I stand corrected um, in regards to helping home buyers and investors buy properties. Why don't you maybe educate us a little bit about the market? What's your thought? Is the market <laughs> Still hot, yes or no? The market has never been like this. So it's, it's so hot that it's 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 it's, it's boiling over. Okay, wow. it's boiling over, and, and I mean this is a constant uh, uh, topic in our industry because uh, we have never seen anything like this. We don't know where it's going. We are all baffled because it, it, there's no trend. It hasn't followed any trend because the usual trend is that you know every five years there'll be a cycle. Five to ten years uh, there's a cycle of up and down. Of a real estate well, correction. Correction. Person, yeah. Well, right now, uh, for the past 10 years, it's been going and going and, you know, every year you hear that it's going to um, stabilize, but it's not doing that. So uh, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's mm -hmm. expand about that. So you're saying this market is, is, is continuing to growing. There is no trend in terms of this great growth and, and a lot of experts. It has defied all the, uh, all the experts, all the... Uh, wow. Yeah, yeah, wow. Yeah. So, I mean, let's talk about the, the pros about this uh, before we get into the cons. So the market's really hot. We've seen a tremendous increase in real estate value. We've seen multiple bids happening. We see bidding wars. Right. Um, you know, we've seen exponential growth in terms of some some key sectors in the GTA for real estate. Mm -hmm. um, you know, how is this good for the economy? I mean, of course, real estate is a driving force for the economy. You know, once people buy a property, they have to buy furnishing, you employ trades, you know, you get uh, you pay a utility and you pay your taxes, like everybody benefits from it. So it's a so great it's, cycle it's, for economy. It is, it is, it is a driving force, uh, if you ask me, because every sector gets compensated in some way once you get into real estate. Awesome. So let's talk about a little bit of the con, I guess the unknown, the fear, mm -hmm. you know, is this bubble going to burst? Are we in a recession or are we not in a recession? <laughs> is it coming? price adjustments, is there going to be the 10, 20, 30 percent fear that people are hearing some economists say? Like, what's your thought on that? Well, it's simple. I mean, um, if you follow the economists and, uh, and the rule of thumb is that you have influx of people coming into the country, 
And if you talk Toronto, for example, most of the people that come to Toronto uh, in Canada end up in Toronto. I forgot the numbers, but it's a very high number, mm -hmm. 40, 50,000 per year. Mm -hmm. Immigration is, is expanding. And so um, the GTA is doing well because of that. And um, if you look at uh, Toronto on the whole, uh, the expansion now is not really within Toronto itself because you cannot go buy property in Toronto if you want new, you have to go in the suburbs. So you find the development is moving forward and forward away. And all these immigrants that come into the country, they, you know, immigrants are, are typically hardworking people. They would rent for a short time, but then eventually uh, they, they would want to buy. And what is, what is driving uh, the, the, the buying um, uh, option is that, you know, you know, interest rate, you've been in, you're in the mortgage, but you know, the interest rate is Absolutely. so low. We have, never seen, we have never seen this in decades. And if you, if you uh, look at the, um, the rate as, as it is today, as compared to 10 years and 15 years mm -hmm. ago, it was like three, four times. So although people are paying a lot for the properties, when you work out the payments, it balances out. It balances out, and it's even <laughs> working out a bit cheaper than, in, in, in some cases, cheaper than rent. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So let's talk about that fear, that unknown fear. Do you think there is going to be a price adjustment, or do you think it's all going to work out for itself? The price adjustment has to come. It has to come, but um, you know, when we look at the market in the past few years, the increments have been very, um, you know, not as uh, not as uh, wide spaced, right? So you have the increments every year, you know, six to seven percent mm -hmm. increase in in, uh, in property value, and so that kind of uh, thing has been happening for many years, but. I don't see that happening, you know, for the next four or five years because then we'll be looking at properties uh, that are worth, you know, six, seven hundred, hundred thousand today will be worth about a million. And who can afford that? So somewhere down the road, it has to come to a point, and I think the big factor in that would be that with interest rate has to go, you know, a bit higher. So uh, yeah, and, so and that's a good point. I mean, it out, yeah. it's called we, in our industry we call it quantitative easing, like you know, okay. just kind yes. of to okay. cool the the industry the economy, in, yeah. in, in, a, in a sense. So. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's get back into your expertise. You know, I've known you for quite a bit of years. You, you're, you are in my same circle of network mm -hmm. uh, of, of specialties, and, and you've been very, very successful in, in what you do. Mm -hmm. So why don't you maybe educate our, our, our audience again and tell us about, you know, there's certain key areas that you specialize in that, yes. that makes you very unique mm -hmm. and, and very, very resourceful for um, real estate uh, buyers and investors that are looking to align themselves with a professional person yes. like you. Why don't you maybe touch on those, 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 those yeah. key areas? Areas. Um, but before we do, yeah. we are going to break for a commercial sure. and we'll be right back. Okay. The real estate landscape has changed tremendously in Toronto over the past 20 years. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, you need to contact Shiv Mazir from Remax All Stars Realty Incorporated. With offices conveniently located in Toronto, Markham, and Stouffville, he's your number one choice for real estate. With expertise in the real estate market, Shiv Masir is a member of the Remax Hall of Fame Platinum Club, 100% club, with over 20 years of experience. To buy or sell your next home, you can contact Shiv at 905-477-0011. This is Poppy, and this is her friend Matt. Poppy and Matt are happy entrepreneurs. Poppy's business is booming, and she now wants to buy her first home. Matt's bistro is also doing very well. He's got his eye on a condo around the corner. Poppy and Matt each head off to their bank. Unfortunately, they both hit what we like to call the self-employed mortgage wall. Poppy and Matt realize they need some professional advice, so they go to their friendly neighborhood mortgage intelligence broker. Turns out, there's a way around their mortgage wall. Their brokers give them five important tips. Use tax returns, notices of assessment, and financial statements to demonstrate your earnings. Document your assets, liabilities, and expenses. Your lender wants to understand your business. A professional online presence helps. Have a good credit rating. The bigger the down payment, the better. And use a mortgage broker. A broker has access to lenders that specialize in self-employed mortgages and can anticipate the challenges you might face. Poppy and Matt were impressed. They're used to working with professionals, so it makes sense to do the same with their mortgage. And now they're happy homeowners. Don't hit the self-employed mortgage wall. Get mortgage intelligence working for you. Welcome back with Let's Talk Money. 
I'm your host, Natasha Bridgman. We're here back with Mr. Shiv Mazir, and we're going to actually talk about his expertise in certain areas of the industry that he's a master of. Why don't you touch on a few of those? Yeah, so um, as I said, um, I, I started out as a, as, a, as a residential agent, and over the years, having people asking you questions about different kinds of properties, commercial properties, and you know, banquet hall, restaurants, and all that. I have kind of uh, diversified my, uh, my portfolio a little bit, and I've been serving people in that area also. But, um, you know, um, one of my specialty, since you ask, is the uh, pre-construction market in the downtown Toronto core, like uh, condos. Oh, wow. I mean, you must have been hearing about that quite a bit because that's where there's a great expansion going on and there's a lot of um, influx of foreigners coming into the downtown core itself on, you know, job placement. And so let's position. touch on that. So yeah. you're talking about high-rise condos. So mm -hmm. I, I'm driving down the Gardner. You're talking mm -hmm. about all those beautiful buildings going up. Yes. There's cranes everywhere. And those are really good signs that the market's really healthy. Yeah. Because, and, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, for a construction of a condominium to actually initialize mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, equipment on the ground, I think it's 65 or 75 percent of the condo has to be pre-sold. Isn't uh, that correct? It's, it's about 65 percent. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that means that there is definitely appetite out there in terms of, of condo condominium but one of the one of the things that I'm reading and, and again maybe I stand corrected is that these condominiums are a lot of investment purchases a lot of people are buying them for rentals sure. and what might happen is that they may not be enough renters to rent these condominiums what's your thought on that projection well you know right now as we speak I'm renting condos that I've sold four or five years ago that are now coming and they're getting occupancy and uh, I don't have enough People are just uh, grabbing them up right in the corner of, um, I can give you an example, right at the corner of the Air Canada Centre in York and Lakeshore. There's some new buildings there and as they come, they go. And you want to know where all these people come from? Well, they come from different parts of Canada, different parts, in different parts of the world. Wow. Uh, a lot and of, are these high rents? They are very high rents. And uh, I mean, these condos also are very um, uh, nicely finished, high-end upgrades. And within the financial district, you know, walking distance to, to the Canada Centre, the financial district, the lake. People just want to be, you know, where the action is, and that's where the action is in the downtown part of Toronto. So it's definitely a key yeah. piece of real estate to It's own. a key piece of real estate so, because, yeah. Sorry, you say that you, you specialize in pre-construction. What mm -hmm. makes you different from the typical real estate agent that will take a home buyer to look at a condominium? What are certain perks or maybe preliminary advantage information that you may have or negotiation yes. that you may have, upper hand? Well, I haven't, I haven't been with the builders um, for many years. Uh, I would say about 10 years in the downtown Toronto core. I've started out with a few builders builders there. So over the years, because you've accumulated so many sales, they put you on what you call their platinum VIP list. And they would give you uh, uh, preview prices before it goes to the general uh, public and agents. Preview prices? What, yeah. what are that? Are they cheaper than the, the public pricing? Yeah, what it is, they, they, they will give you certain kinds of incentives. Okay, the price may, may be about the same, but the incentives that you get, for example, you may have things like uh, discount on the parking, discount on um, locker, assignment free. Um, assignment fee is uh, usually- Waived? Know, yeah, three to 5,000, it's waived. So mean, meaning you can sell the property before you even get- Occupancy, take Occupancy yeah. take possession. Mm -hmm. And other discounts, you know, uh, upgrade discount and all that. So you get into that and then by the time it gets to the other agents and it opens to the public, you know, you're ahead by at least fifteen, twenty thousand dollars when you take all the incentives into um, perspective. That, that's that's pretty good. And not only mm. is your clients ahead, they also have inside information about a property or a condominium building that's coming on the market before it actually hits the market, right? That is true. So we normally get it, you know, a few months before it goes to the A few market. months. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. So great. So not only that you specialize in pre-construction high-rise condo in the downtown core yeah. and you have access to some wonderful perks, you also specialize in commercial real estate yes. for clients that are looking for business for self-purchases or investments to I as do. well. Yeah. And what else do you love to do and, and you, you're a master of? Well, I mean, I do a little bit of everything. I would say I'm 75% uh, uh, residential, 25% commercial agent. Mm -hmm. But I mean, uh, basically, uh, I do everything. And, uh, and now, uh, being with the office I'm in, Remax All Stars, I don't know, my previous program, um, I had mentioned we have 10 locations. Okay? Wow. T so your brokerage has 10, 10 locations. Wow. Are these satellite offices or locations? No, they're actual locations. Wow. So um, 
what that allows me to do is to expand into things like cottages, farm properties, because some of the locations are in places like uh, Lindsay, uh, Bob Cajun, uh, Sutton, Port Perry. So that opened us a whole, a whole entire corridor of opportunity for your clients. So my clients can, you know, if they want a, a cottage, for example, I have the connection there because we have our offices there and we kind of network with, among each other because they would have, they will have people on their side looking for properties in Toronto mm -hmm. if they may not want to come all the way here. So we do kind of a referral basis, but we do have, um, that's within our office itself. We can actually sell you anything you want these days. <laughs> so quickly. Yeah. Top five things if a person wants to buy a home or they're a first time home buyer, mm -hmm. tell me five things that they need to work in terms of making sure that they have all the ducks in order lined up before they come see you and after they see you. Well, well I mean, basically they have to have, um, they have to be pre-qualified. Okay, so that's being, yeah. you know, uh, pre-qualified at a bank or with a mortgage broker like myself, mm -hmm. making sure that they are qualified for a mortgage amount, a purchase yeah. price, and an interest rate, right? That's correct. I mean, there, there are certain things people look for. They look for neighborhood, you know, they may be looking for um, certain kinds of schools, so certain kinds of amenities. So basically, let them do, you know, uh, a want versus need list, you know, their wish list. Well, we have, uh, that's the other thing, if they, if they need that kind of information, I have, I have that in a package form. They can get Get, you know things to look for when you're buying your first home. Mm -hmm. We have that in a package form at my office, which mm -hmm. you, know, I'm, you know I could share with them and give them a copy, so they have an idea. Awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you got the package form, you got a pre-approval. Mm -hmm. How about inspection and appraisal? Are those well, those are important too. Well, it, they're important these days. Though what is happening because when you have uh, multiple <laughs> multiple <bids>. offers, uh, <laughs> a lot of times people just waive the inspection. And, and they, is there any recourse uh, of? Uh, for the seller if things were not disclosed in terms of damage or, or, or certain is issues with, let's just say, uh, if it was a grow up or there was mechanical or there was a death in the house, is it legal, is it, is it, le it, is, is it a legal requirement for the real estate agent to disclose to the other selling party that there was a death in the home? Those are legal requirements, yes. If you ask me if it's a suicide in a home, or grow up, yes, those are legal. Uh, Does it have to be disclosed or it has to be disclosed? It has to be disclosed, yeah. So, I mean, although you buy a home and you may, we have inspection and whatever, an appraisal, um, the fact is that the, these are, um, that, that kind of information has to be disclosed on the And on if the it wasn't, itself. then there's recourse There's back. recourse, of course. I mean, yeah. um, we have to, um, I mean, a lot of these cla um, clauses these days have the grow up uh, clause and suicide clause in there. But even if it's not there, uh, the mere fact that the agent hasn't disclosed it on the uh, on the listing, it's you know it's uh, they're, they're liable if there's any kind of um, you know. It's good to know. Yeah. So I mean, you're taking somebody, you're you're showing them around a house, mm -hmm. houses I may say, sorry, and you know, when you're presenting an offer um, f on behalf of the, your your client, what are some of the exit strategies that you try to put in there if it's not a multiple bid or a bidding war where you have to think out of the box, but a standard agreement would include some of these strategies such as? Inspection, you know, uh, that's a very important um, uh, uh, criteria. For and a you lot have of access to great inspectors, is that we correct? We do have. Okay. We have over the years, we use a lot of inspection uh, inspectors, but I mean, um, that's something people, some people tend to want to have in their agreement, although, you know, they're comfortable with their home, but I think that's a big thing. Financing, of course, I mean, um, more in, in most cases, I would get to uh, get a pre-approval before I even, uh, you know, put an offer. So, I think the most critical thing for most people, um, you know, is the inspection because yeah, there are a lot of other fine prints in the agreement of portion and sale uh, and sale itself that will uh, protect both protect parties. Whatever, yeah. So, I mean, that's good to know. Yeah. So, I mean, in closing, let, let's let's talk a little bit about. Um, if people want to get a hold of you, where would they would find you, and where you, where and where yeah. you are? <laughs> <laughs> well, these days, you know, with the technology, um, Google and all these things. But, but so uh, just Google <laughs> Shim Mazir, right? <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, my name, of course. Uh, I have an email address, smazir@rogers.com, and cell phone is four one six two seven five seven nine one one. 
Um, and you just, if you go to Remax uh, website, we are there. I mean, these days it's difficult not to find someone if you want to find them. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's, uh, that is actually correct. Yeah. Um, listen, it was really uh, amazing having you here today on our show, and I hope our viewers Same. learned a lot about uh, the real estate market and, and Shiv Mazir and his expertise. Bringing your expertise to the table definitely enlightened me uh, in terms of further information. Uh, I'll leave you with one question, and then mm -hmm. we will end it for today. Sure. Do you think that Toronto is going to be the next New York City? Well, interestingly, what you're saying there is exactly what they're trying to do right now. And that's one of the reasons they're, they're, um, they're upgrading the waterfront. And you see all these cranes in Toronto. And one thing I must point out, um, although we are gearing towards the, you know, Manhattan and all these major London, Paris and all these great cities, we are still uh, underpriced uh, by about 50% in terms of um, real, estate value. real estate value. So there's so, still a long opportunity. Long opportunity. So when people say like, uh, you know, prices are, is, is so high in Toronto, relative to these major cities, we are still very low. So, and with all the developments happening, all the cranes and all the waterfront uh, activity going on, they're trying to make it relative to these places. So eventually what you will see is the people who get into these condos and properties especially in the downtown core. I'm saying that because, you know, people tend to want to uh, converge there when they come. All well, these, it's a city, right? It's a city and all, city the, life, yeah. all, all the business guys and all the, mm -hmm. you know, big executives, they want to come there. So the values is only going to go up and the city is only going to get better and, and you're going to see, and bigger, and you'll be seeing much, much more condos. It's not even enough. And one article was uh, a few months, they were saying, you know, you have people saying it's too many. Well, one article in the, in the Toronto Star did say that there are not enough condos in, in the market uh, for people. Because, you know, Interesting. Uh, yeah, you can't buy a property downtown. Uh, uh, even a townhouse is going for four million. How many people can afford that, right? Well, you know what? I I'll hold you to that. And we'll have another conversation, <laughs> let's say, a year from now yeah. and see where the market is. Sure. And I would love to have you back on our show. Oh, same and thank you so much. Thank you very much. And for me. thank you. And I uh, hope you enjoy our episode today with Let's Talk Money. Your host, I'm Natasha. And take care and have a good one. The real estate landscape has changed tremendously in Toronto over the past 20 years. If you're looking to buy or sell a home, you need to contact Shiv Mazir from Remax All Stars Realty Incorporated. With offices conveniently located in Toronto, Markham, and Stouffville, he's your number one choice for real estate. With expertise in the real estate market, Shiv Mazir is a member of the Remax Hall of Fame Platinum Club, 100% Club, with over 20 years of experience. To buy or sell your next home, you can contact Shiv at 905-477-0011. Thank you for joining us. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what Let's Talk Money is all about, what our mission and goal is for our audience. First and foremost, our first priority is to educate you how to earn, save, and make money. And how are we going to do that, my audience? Very simple. We're going to have a lot of subject matter experts on our show, and we'll be interviewing them for you. And how? Very simple. We're going to be asking those key, most important questions that you need to get you the education, resources, and tools to make the right decision for your future. From mortgage brokers, to qualified real estate agents, to financial advisors, to credit advisors, to insurance advisors, you name it. We're going to have them all on the show just for you. So stay tuned for some great guests and for great questions. And get your pen and paper ready because you're going to be learning a lot how to earn, save, and make money for your future. We want you to invest with confidence. We want to guide you towards financial freedom. And the way to do that is through education. So stay tuned and I look forward for you to join us on the show and to meet all of our guests.